All right, so welcome everyone. So this is the prep day of our 14 day blood sugar challenge. I'm Dr. Tiffany Keenan. I'm very happy that you're all here with me tonight from Canada and from Bermuda. Wait a minute. All right, so just a brief recap. So for those of you that might've heard my story the other night, but I wanna tell you just briefly why blood sugar has been just very important to me. Um, and one of those reasons is about 20 years ago, I was down on a trip in Costa Rica, and this is Mount Arenal. It's a very big volcano. And on that trip, I was cranky. And you would think I'm in a beautiful location, but why was I cranky? I was drinking these lovely mango smoothies. And what I found when I drank these smoothies, and I didn't know it at the time, but they were spiking my blood sugar, and then I was going into blood sugar withdrawal. So despite being in this beautiful area, I wasn't having the 100% a great time that I could be having there. And now I show you this picture. This is me 20 years later. This is me in Morocco when I was uh, in Morocco during Ramadan and I was having basically one meal a day. I was fasting. Guess what? No blood sugar yeah. fluctuations. Oh, I'll just get you guys to put your phones your, um, on mute if you could, please. And uh, so I was in Morocco during Ramadan, one meal a day, and I didn't have any blood sugar fluctuations. So what was the secret to this? What happened? I learned about balance. And you know, in my 25 years in medicine, it's taken me a long time to learn so much more about the body. Now I want you to look closely at this because this is a diagram. At first, you're gonna be a little bit scared about, but in two weeks time, you're gonna look at pictures just like this and you're gonna know exactly what this means to you. So what was going on with me back then, I was having something called a reactive hypoglycemia. So my sugar was going low and I was reacting to it. So here you can see in the diagram, and you'll know this more very soon, a blood sugar spike followed by a low. And when this low was happening, that's why I was getting cranky. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I want to share more what's going on. So we also recapped last week, there's two things that you need to know about when we're talking about blood sugar. So one is sugar, right? We've got glucose. And this glucose is in the food that we eat, it's floating around in our bloodstream. But we have a key called insulin. And this insulin goes to the door of our cell and it opens the lock to allow the sugar to come inside your cell. But what happens when we have a lot of sugar, we raise the amount of insulin in our body. And why is this important? This is the key. The key is that insulin is not just about diabetes. It's not just about prediabetes. When insulin is up, we get joint aches and pains. We gain weight. Blood pressure rises. We can see cholesterol levels that rise. We have the mood changes that you saw happen with me. But we also know, which is much more startling, is that we have um, many more cancers that are associated with high insulin. So we have breast, colon, bowel, and prostate associated with high insulin levels. We have hormone imbalances. For any women that are going through menopause, if your insulin levels are high, you're going to have a lot more symptoms. And for the men out there as well, we're going to have things like low libido. So this is why we're here to understand about blood sugar, to now know about blood insulin, and then see what's going on within our body. So do I have you all so far? Glucose, insulin. So if any of you have downloaded uh, the journal that I provided in the Facebook page, you'll see that one of the first things, thanks Micheline, one of the first things that we uh, talk about in the journal is the prep, okay? So I'm gonna tell you my why. So why I'm here, why am I here for you? And what is my intention for the challenge? because this is 14 days, like this is 14 evenings that I'm gonna be here with you. And part of my why is that I've seen again and again that patients, people that I've come across are not just educated. So I really want to help you with education. And my intention for this challenge is that by the end of it, you will not only be educated, that you will be empowered. So what do I mean? What are we gonna do in this challenge? You are gonna be educated. Week one, we're going to talk about body awareness. So this is my education that I want to have for you. So in body awareness, no, we're not going to be rolling around, but you know, you see those beautiful little babies that are on the floor and they just seem to know what it is. 
So what I'm going to be getting to you to do, you're going to put a device on your arm. And with this device, you're going to be able to see inside what's going on in your body. That's going to be week one. And number two, and this is my other goal for you, is empowerment. You know, one of the things that I feel has happened in medicine is often you can go to your physician and you're looking for your physician to give you an answer. But we have so many tools and we're going to have more and more tools coming all the time in this age of, um, of AI, you know, this technology that's coming in. And this is one of those first devices that's going to really be able to for you to capture your own data. So I want you to be empowered. At the end of this two weeks, at the end of your day 14, I want you to be able to say, hey, I know what's going on in my blood sugar. I know what this pattern is. I know what this means for me. And guess what? I'm able to tweak this pattern in me. I can develop precision nutrition. I'm going to hack my food. I'm going to learn what's right going on in my body. So are you excited? A little bit? Yes? Okay, so my challenge for you right now is, and maybe I should have kept that slide up just a little bit. I'm gonna share it just one more time because it's an important slide for you to look at, okay? So I've been doing a lot of talking, and, um, but before you begin anything, we know that the more clear that you are with your intention, the more successful that you're gonna be with your goals. So I hope you've brought pen and paper you don't need much, you don't need the journal, you can have a scrapbook, whatever it, need, it is, right on the back of a bill envelope. But I want you to think about right now, why am I here? What, why did I decide to sign up for Dr. Keenan's <laughs> day challenge to take this time out? And then I want you to think, what is my intention? So first about why you're here. So maybe you're here because you were just diagnosed with prediabetes and you wanna learn a little bit more about it. So what is your intention? So your intention would be that you want to Pam. know your blood sugar so that you can- I'll call it the dog, please. Pages. I'll call it. Okay. So those are the things that I want you to think about right now. Why are you here? And what is your intention for the next 14 days? So I'm going to stop sharing this screen. Now, I have a challenge. Oh, I have a challenge for you, those that are here. I'll get you to mute. Let me see if we can mute some folks here. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is something called a breakout room. Now, some of you may or may not have done this before. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is that number one, when we sit in intention and we talk about our why, that's really important. But number two, when we look at neuroscience and I study this, right? I study the brain. I try to biohack myself, right? I want to know what's going on. But when you talk to someone else and you explain to them what's going on and why you're there, then that's going to anchor that even more for you, okay? <clears throat> We've got, talked a little bit about the why and our intention for the challenge. We did our breakout session. Okay, so this is the device that we have, okay? We've got the Freestyle Libra Monitor. And we're going to go over the tips of how we're going to apply it, okay? Now, the one thing I want you to look at just from this picture that I have, okay? And this is one tip as you're getting ready. This person actually has a sensor on the side of their arm. One of the things we're going to do in just a minute is I want your sensor toward the back side of your arm, okay? And I'm going to go over a few tips before we put the sensors on, okay? And, oh, bless you. So let me come back out of this chair. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want people to get out your sensors for those of you that maybe haven't put it on yet. So you should have a few different things. So if you're in Canada, you're gonna have just the sensor, okay? So I want you to open up the box. Inside your box, you're gonna have this thing with a cover, okay? This is the actual sensor. You're gonna have something with a blue bottom, okay? And then you're gonna have an alcohol swab. So open that up. So in Bermuda, you're gonna have that box and then you're gonna have a reader. And this is, we're gonna talk about the reader and this, the, um, the, your phone in just a moment. 
So first thing you need to do is just get your alcohol swab out and just open it up, okay? So what we're looking at, what happens if you put it just on the side of your arm right here is sometimes people catch it a little bit on their purse or this sort of thing. So you're looking just a little bit on the back of your arm, just in that area. So you're just gonna rub your alcohol swab around here, okay? And now hopefully you don't have a lot of cream or lotion on. If you did happen to have a lot of cream or lotion, then it would be good to wash your arm. Or if there's any men here, um, then if you're super, super hairy as a man, then you might need to shave that little area because what's really important is the contact that you have with your sensor. Does that make sense? I'm gonna open my chat here and see what we have here. Can't feel it. Okay, so then what I want you to do, this little gadget, okay, this is the sensor. So I want you just to peel this open, peel open the packet. It's quite hard. You have to give it quite a little pull to open it up. Now, this little piece that comes with it, I do want you to keep it, all right? And I want, want you to keep your box. In Bermuda, if you have a defunct, if you have malfunction of your sens sensor, they will replace your sensor. And I think in Canada, the same. In Canada, you have to call the, the number, like the Freestyle Libre, the Abbott phone number, but they will replace it if something goes wrong, okay? So keep that to the side. Then you've got your other device here, all right? So I just want you to twist this. It takes a little bit of a crack just to open it up, all right? Now, okay, for those that are needle phobic, do not look inside. But for those that wanna see what this looks like, you can look in the bottom of your little device. Oh, sorry, in, in just a moment, you'll look inside. So if you look at this now inside, you'll see like a, a plastic thing. So that's the sensor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate it by lining it up here. So on this, I have a little line right here, you can see. And then on your sensor, if you keep spinning it around, you're gonna see there's a little line here. So basically you're gonna line up the gray on the top with a little gray line at the bottom, put it on a flat surface. So put it straight in. It can only basically go in one way and you're gonna shove it down and it should make a, a clunk sound. And then you'll have the device that's together like this. Okay, so now you can just pick it up and now if you want to look, you can see the little activator that's on the Oh, inside. fuck. <laughs> but do not. Oh, shh. You might want to mute everybody, um, Dr. Kanan. What's that? <laughs> you might want to mute everybody okay. again. <laughs> and uh, I don't really know how to do that one. I don't know how to Or mute. if everyone is on, yeah. if they can check that they're on mute. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> We have teachers that are really good at these things. Okay, so then what you're gonna do on the back of your arm, just pick the spot, just take it there, click, it's in. Simple, quick and easy. Then just remove it. Then you can just take your hand and just go like that to confirm that it's in place. That didn't okay. hurt. <laughs> so give me a thumbs up if you have your sensor on your arm. We got some sensors on. Perfect. Seeing some thumbs up. This is great. Got it on. There we go. See, there's no blood. There's no gut. There's nothing guts, nothing like that to it. It's a little tiny device. And what is underneath it is a little bit of basically, it looks like a fishing line, okay, for the Maritimers that are here or the Bermudians. It's a tiny little monofilament. That's all that's underneath your skin. It's really, really small. And that's going to be reading over the next two weeks what's called the interstitial fluid. Okay, so now what I want you to do. So if you are in, in Canada, you need your cell phone. And I had posted earlier that there is an app that you need to download. So the app is called Freestyle Libra 1 or 2. And that depends on the box that you have. I believe most Canadians should have a box that says Freestyle Libra 2 down here, okay? And then what you would do is just go to your app store and download the app for the Freestyle Libra 2. Bermudians, oh, yeah, go ahead, Kelly. Mm -hmm. 
I can't seem to get mine to work. What am I doing wrong? Okay. So just, I have the two parts. Yeah. And then I rotate it inside. No, you don't rotate it. Just look okay. for the little, feel the little gray part on the top. The gray part, yep. Yeah, put your finger there. And then on the yep. bottom, there should be a little line. And uh, so that yep. should, it should line right up. So when you go in, you shouldn't have to rotate. It should, if you line up this part and that line, then it should click as it goes in. Okay, and then put the whole thing to my arm? No, nope. and then, then lift it up. Did you hear kind of a clunk sound? You have to, Kelly, you just have to like punch it with your hand a little bit, push it down until it clicks. Not really clicking. Sound. When you lift it up now, do you see underneath? Can you see a little needle coming out? Yeah, that looks okay. like. I think that's a little needle. So can I don't need this white look, thing for anymore. That's right. So look inside your little blue section. Do you see yep, a little I needle? See it. Okay, do. you've got. Okay, now next step is just put that on your arm, and then push down. Ah. Just hold it there and push. Woo! Got it. There, and then just smooth it out to make sure it's on. Good. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect, so we got some sensors on. Now, there was a comment about Tegaderm over the sensor. So um, there are patches that you can buy. So some people would call it like an op site, if you know what that is at the hospital or Tegaderm or the wrap that physiotherapists use on you. It's kind of like that um, kinese tape. If you find you sweat a lot, you may need that. But honestly, even in Bermuda this time of year, most people are fine without having to put any kind of additional tape over the top of it, okay? Uh, but if you find you do sweat a lot, then you can actually buy these little strips that will go over, um, over the sensor. Oh, we've got one here. There we go. So Tammy's got a piece of Tegaderm. And Tegaderm, you can buy at any pharmacy. It's like if you've ever had an intravenous in your hand, it's that clear little piece of like saran wrap that goes over the top of it. Okay, so we've got them on our arms. Okay, so Bermudians. Bermudians, what you need to do is take your little a reader, hit the on button, okay? And then it's gonna ask you to start a new sensor. So you'll see that on your screen. Now my screen's not gonna be the same as yours, but on your little screen, it should say, start a new sensor. Then you literally will go to the back of your arm and you should be able to start the new sensor. I just, and for those that might've had a sensor on, um, sorry, I'm just going to. Go um, actually, I just uh, plugged mine in. And so it asked to set the date and the time. And then it's asking me to start a target glucose range. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, I thank you for reminding me of that. So as you go to put this in, so you have to set, yes, your date and your time. <clears throat> so you'll just have to go into your little device, you start to click it. And then when you get to your language is English, um, unless it's Portuguese, and then you'll come to the target glucose range. So for those that are in Bermuda, the target range is 70 to 140, okay? For the Canadians that are there, okay? So I'm hopefully you're getting the app and the target range for the Canadians is four to 11. But I believe in Canada, I think that's already built into the app that's on your phone. So I'll give you a few minutes to go by. Um, Sorry, it, you said 70 to 140 for Bermuda? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it takes a moment to kind of get that, uh, the calibration and everything set up within your sensor. And then once you're able to get your time and everything put into it, it will actually tell you that the new sensor doesn't start for 60 minutes because basically it takes time to begin sensing underneath your skin. So then you can just hit the okay button. Okay, so how do we have our, so our Bermudians, so are you able to um, get your time put in, your range from 70 to 140? And then what about Canadians? Perfect in Bermuda, okay. 
Now, what about Canadians? How are you making out with your app? The app's pretty cool, isn't it? I know. We don't have it in Bermuda. <laughs> and you know something? I tried to make it work. I brought a sensor from Canada. And um, it, if you don't have the a Canadian cell phone, it doesn't work. Because I think of the VPN, so I wasted a sensor once. That's like 100 bucks down the green. Don't, but anyway. <laughs> Um, but what you're going to find with the Canadians on the app, you know, you can really see the specifics, but Bermudians, what we'll be doing is for all of us, I'll show you how to upload the data to computer. And once we upload the data to computer, then we're all doing, um, all doing great. So someone said their app was showing 3.9 to 9. Yeah, so when we're looking at optimal, and I'll bring a screen up just in a moment, so if we look at what, you know, diabetes is, so the range of where we want to be, so 70 to 140 would be the healthy range to be in. If you're a diabetic, you may go up to 180 as well. In Canada, if you're looking at those numbers, so yeah, 3.9 to 9, but 4 to kind of 11 is the approximate average. Now, if you're not a diabetic, Savannah, you can leave 3.9 to 9 as your numbers. Um, and yes, it'll be ready for you in 60 minutes. So does anybody else need help with any part of either their, their reader or their Canadian cell phone trying to figure out the targets? All right, so we're good. So a few things I wanna show you. So on the Bermuda reader and on the Canadian as well, they are generally about the same. One of the things that you're able to do is you'll find in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little bell. So if you hit that bell, some, what the bell is, is a reminder. So what you're gonna do throughout the day, you need to scan every time you eat and preferably an hour after your meals. Now, so you wanna scan at least four to six times a day. Now, most of you, because you're here, I know that you're gonna be scanning a lot more than that. But as long as you scan four to six times, then all that information is gonna be stored within the sensor and it's, the computer is gonna remember this for you. But if you think, um, I, I don't know if I'm gonna remember, this is a new device for me, then under the bell, you're gonna see it says, check glucose and that you can repeat it daily and then you can choose a time. And you can uh, do it once or you can actually do it on a timer. So that's the bell icon. Now it might be a little bit different in Canada. Um, I think it's still down in that bottom left-hand corner because maybe you do want a reminder, maybe first thing in the morning, you may want to set it for your typical breakfast time so that you can start to get into the habit of taking something. Because I think many of us here are probably, you know, not many, some are probably beyond the age where we need to remember our birth control pills anymore. But, you know, if you want to set that, remember you used to set your phone so you'd remember it or you tag it to something else when you brushed your teeth. Um, but just whatever it's going to take for you if you want to set that reminder. And then the other thing that you're able to do with your device, okay, in the top right hand corner, you're going to see a cog wheel. So, you know, we know the typical cog wheel that you see that gives information. So if you touch on that, so then what you're able to do in the cog wheel, you're gonna see things like sounds, your target range, control test, solution test, time and date language, system status, reader basics and dosage increment. But really the one thing that you might want to adjust here is your sounds. So if you go into your setting for sounds, then you can basically just adjust the setting on the device. So for volume, you can turn that to high or low, um, and you can actually even turn on the vibration if you want. And also just like with your cell phone, there's a touch tone. So if you want to hear the touch when you touch your computer, uh, your gadget, you can turn that on or off. And again, you'll be able to play around with these things a little bit more, but I wanted to show you at least the basics of how you access it on your, on your reader. And always to come back, you can hit the blue button or if you have on your cell phone, you can always come back by hitting the very bottom button at the bottom of the screen. So then the other thing that I'll be able to, I'll show you, you won't have data on your phone, but I'll show you what's called review history, because this is what you're going to have the most fun with. So 
you won't be able to access it now, but tomorrow night you'll be able to access and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. But under review history, you come to a few different screens. So one is your log book, and that's gonna show you your blood sugar, your specific blood sugar. But what I really like is the daily graph because the daily graph is what's gonna show us our patterns and our trends. And that's one of the things I really want you to develop is that, is that daily graph. Hold yours up, Lisa, see if we can see it there. It's kind of, yeah, it's the brightness that gets a little bit hard to see. But thanks for showing what's your levels. So are you, if you're able to see mine, again, no, I think it's the reflection of the screen that makes it really difficult. But one of the things that I'd like for you to do, okay, when you go in to check your blood glucose, all you need to do is scan, hit the button. So you hit the blue button at the bottom or on your phone, you're gonna hit the blue button and you're just gonna pass it by your arm and it's gonna show you the number, okay? There's a really good function and what I'll do is I'll post it in the screen so you know what I'm talking about, but basically it's a food stamp. And what a food stamp does when you check your blood sugar, it allows us to know that you ate something. So that when we go to upload your data, you're gonna be able to see this little apple that comes up on the screen. And that's gonna tell us that that's a time that you ate your food. Because when we download the data, that's gonna be super, super important. But what I'm gonna do with those, I'm gonna take a few screenshots and I'm just gonna post them in the group because I realize now um, it's not so easy to show this uh, directly on the camera. Okay, um, so we talked about that. Now the blood sugar itself. So the other thing I want you to know, okay, so especially for those who are not diabetic or on any medication, you may have low sugar. Don't worry about a low sugar, okay? Unless you're on insulin or a lot of medicines, you're not most likely gonna be having a reaction to a low sugar. So my sugar has gone down in Bermuda units, I've gone down to 56. In Canadian units, my sugar has gone to 2.9 and I've not had a reaction, okay? Now that part of those reasons are is that my body's very flexible. I have what's called metabolic flexibility. So my body doesn't respond to that. Um, but if you do find that your sugar is low and you feel like, oh, I'm cranky or something, just eat a little bit, but don't panic, do not panic, okay? Now, for those of you that are diabetic or pre-diabetic, the other thing that if you have the reader, the reader is also a blood sugar monitor. So at the very bottom, there's a little uh, entrance point. So that's for a glucose test strip. So for some of you, you might've already had glucose test strips that you used before. So literally, all you, if you wanted to compare what is my blood glucose versus my reader from the monitor, you could buy glucose test strips and you can put them right in the bottom. So if you did that, what would you expect to see? One of the things that we know is the glucose can be off by 15% because what we're measuring with the sensor, the Freestyle Libra, is we're measuring interstitial fluid. So this didn't go directly into your bloodstream. It's going into the cells on the back of your arm, basically. So that's interstitial fluid. And it can be 15% off. You know, so depending on Canadian or Bermudian units, you could be off by a unit, like one point in Canada. In Bermuda, you could be off maybe by 15 units compared to a blood glucose level. So does that make sense? So it's a point to know. Because the other thing that you're going to start seeing when you put your sensor on is you're going to start to see some up and down arrows. And you're gonna become very familiar with this. So as you're scanning, you're gonna see sometimes that your sugar's on the rise or other times that your sugar is falling. And again, if you're not a diabetic, you generally don't have to worry about those numbers, but you're here because you wanna see the trends and the trends are what's super, super important. And that's where I want your focus to be. All right, so we talked about the trends, we talked about lows, and we talked about the actual blood glucose itself. So do you have any questions? All right. Uh, I'm curious why the, sorry, why the reading numbers are different in Bermuda and Canada, like the 70 to 140 or the four to 10? So in, in Bermuda, we're using millimoles per liter, I believe, I think, or maybe I got it right. And then, so we use the same units as America does. 
Just oh, like, it's just, it's basically metric and imperial. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And scanning it. So yes, you do need to scan, like I said, at least four times a day. But as long as you scan, for example, right before you go to bed. So I usually I usually scan right before the bed. I go to bed, I put it on my bed stand. And then I like to scan even before I get out of bed in the morning to start to see what my blood glucose is doing. Uh, because again, for those of you who might have invested $100 to do this, right? This is a great challenge. So the more you scan, the better. And don't worry, um, I've seen people scan like 20 times a day. It's not going to, your device is not going to run out or anything like that. You can scan as much as you want. But what we will see when we upload your data, and for those of you that want to share your data, what we're going to be able to see is all the data points of what your sugar has been. Okay, so optimal numbers. So what are the optimal numbers? So let me share this with you. I'm gonna share my screen here. So optimal numbers. So if you are in, so for Bermudians, so the optimal fasting, plas fasting plasma glucose, so your fasting blood glucose, it should be, so normal is, um, would be less than 100. So pre-diabetes, this is for fasting is 100 to 125 or for diabetic 126. So what you may discover is you may wake up tomorrow, okay? And if you're in Bermuda, you may wake up and your sugar is 110. You may be a pre-diabetic that didn't know it, right? You may wake up and your sugar is 130. You may be a diabetic that didn't know it. Now you might ask why would that happen? So depending on what your doctor does when they do your blood sugar, when they do your annual lab work, they may or may not have looked at your fasting blood sugar. But the reason that we're going to do this is that, or they might have done it, but maybe your number that day was okay. But we're going to have 14 days at least of a morning fasting blood sugar, okay? So again, if it is up a little bit, don't be concerned because that is why you're here. And I'm going to give you lots of guidance. Now, if you're in Canada, what this number would be, like I said, fasting, your sugar should be less than four. Pre-diabetes in Canada, I think is maybe, oh, I need to, I think is about seven. Um, but then if you're diabetic, if you're over 11, then you are a diabetic on a fasting blood sugar. Does that answer the question? Okay. Now, I also want to show you, because I know some of you are thinking this, because some of you are biohackers, okay? Now, if you just wanna cover the basics, close your eyes, please do not look at this slide. But if you're a hacker, and I'll post this in the group, so these are the optimal levels that Levels Health recommends. So Levels Health is a great, um, a great site to follow along with. They are run by many of the top docs in America that talk about metabolic health. So Dr. Dr. Robert Lustig is on their board. He is the pediatrician that wrote and did the movie all about blood sugar in children. So what Levels proposes, now this is based on healthy individuals because Levels has thousands of people in America that have this device that are wearing them on their arm. So those are the levels that um, Levels suggest, okay? So don't get worried about these numbers. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert these into Canadian units for you. So we'll have optimal levels in Canada and optimal levels in American units. Um, but remember, tomorrow is just day one and tomorrow is a day that you're going to play. Okay. So what I want you to do tomorrow. So what is extremely important. So either on a piece of paper or through a food journal, if you happen to download the book, which is available for you on the Facebook page, or the third option is you need to take a picture. You need to write down or take a photo of everything that you eat and you drink because you're wearing this device because you want to see the trends and the patterns. Remember week one, we're not making any, we're not making any changes. I don't want you to eat healthy. Okay. In week one, I just want you to eat the way you normally eat because I want you to see what's going on in your normal week. And so at the end of week one, we're going to upload your data. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to start to really pinpoint it and look our, 
at things where you can start to make the changes, okay? So you need to have whatever breakfast, lunch, and dinner, whatever snacks you have, whatever drinks you have. Now, the extra add-on, if you could, is, is, is important. If you wanna write down when you're doing activity. So activity would be exercise, and I'm gonna show you how to timestamp your exercise, okay? Um, and then of course your rest and your sleep. What's really important to notice is if you have a night that you're sleepless, I want you to keep track of that. Or if you have a night that you stayed up late, because one of the things that I discover all the time by seeing, I probably have over a hundred patients that have worn the Freestyle Libra, is that we see that sleep can also correlate with your blood glucose status, okay? And the water status, that's kind of there just as a reminder for you, but really keeping track is super, super important. Okay, so that's what I've prepared for you all tonight. Um, I was hoping to keep this under an hour. And my goal for the next sessions is to try, you know, I know tomorrow night you're gonna have lots of questions because it's gonna be day one, uh, but I really wanna try to keep these under 30 minutes because I really want you to tune in. And if you're not able to tune in, there's always gonna be a replay later uh, in the Facebook group. Or for those of you that signed up by email, we'll send the replay out the next day by email, okay? So a question, so after a meal, how long should we be doing it, okay? So roughly an hour after is when you should check your blood sugar to see what your spike is looking. What you're gonna start to notice is that, you know, it doesn't really matter when you scan because you're gonna have the data stored. So whether it's an hour or two hours, when we go to really interrogate your data, that's when you're gonna start to see the changes. But roughly, to get into the habit, you're gonna scan uh, when you have your food and then you're gonna scan roughly an hour later, okay? And so for those of you, I'll tell you one of my little hacks, you've probably already seen it, is I don't write down what I eat, okay? But I take a picture. So what I do is, because right now I have a Bermuda reader, is I, I, I scan my blood sugar and I put that beside my plate of food and then I take a picture of it, okay? Now, if you're in, Canada, then what you can do is do a screenshot of your blood sugar and then take a picture of your food. But as long as you're tracking it, that's the most important. Thing. Okay. I said, oh, roughly, I'm an roughly an hour after your meal is when you want to do it. So do you have any other questions? No, is, and I'll just want to ask, is anyone else doing this with a family member? Anyone with a family member? No. No, or a friend? Yes. No. Okay. So if you're doing it with a family member or friend, I'm also gonna share with you, it's called Libra Link. Basically what it allows you is to share your information with somebody else's. So you know how we do our step challenge, you know, 10,000 steps. Well, you'll be able to see how to do it. So I'm gonna walk you through that. That'll be in a separate little video. And if you're with your family, it's really, you know, it's just really great because you'll be able to encourage each other. But you're, what you're also going to start to see is how your body responds differently to the body of the person that you're doing the challenge with. And that's why you're here, because no body, no one's body is the same. So for me, the reason I get excited about this, because, you know, the number one reason people come to me often is for weight loss. And I say, let's put the Libra on you. Let's see what's going on when you're eating certain foods, because then we can make all those wonderful lifestyle changes that are going to be specific to you. And at the end of two weeks, you're going to know how to do that for yourself. All right. This wonderful. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. I'm going to stay online if anybody wanted to ask a few questions, maybe not within the group. Uh, but otherwise, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the recording.